Hi, welcome to Exploring Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega. I'm here with my co-host Anel. Anel, good to see you again. Okay, this is episode number 99. Okay, this is like we're almost at 100 here. And this is called No Free Will and Praying to God. Okay, and the, the, the idea behind this show is like, you know, when you think, all right, nothing that we do is up to us. And in this show, we're going to like define what, what happens not as the universe, but as God, right? We're going to like be very religious with this show. Okay, why, what, you, what is free will? Why, does, why is the show important? Let's do this. Yeah, let's begin. Okay, now, free will, when people say that we have a free will, what they're saying is like what we think, say, and do is up to us regardless of anything that's not in our control, like how we were raised, like our genetics, like what we've learned, like our drives and all this stuff. And like, you know, you, you can easily understand how that's impossible. Um, why is this important? Like how it could be independent of genetics, conditioning, or even the hedonic imperative that we never talk about. Absolutely. Ever, okay, uh, why is it important? It's the biggest thing ever. And I'll let you tell the audience why. The biggest thing ever. I mean, like you've ever. got... The whole world is deluded about this, absolutely deluded about who we are as human beings. I mean, this is kind of like, you know, like, it was like before Darwin, we thought that, you know, that we were created from a clump of, of mud or something, you know? And now, so this is bigger, this is much bigger, because this, like, you know, this, this is like getting who we are right, getting why we do the, what yeah, we do right. The belief in free will touches every part of your existence, absolutely. how we speak. Who we blame, how we sue someone, and the language that we use. So it's the biggest thing ever. Yeah, and as we get this, we're going to have to change our our language, the words we use. Yep. We, all right, so let's let's get into this now. Basically, in this show, we're going to talk about like what it is when we're praying to God, what's happening, you know. And it's very surreal when when we get into it. But like before that, we've got a few premises. These are the premises that people basically go by when we, they talk about God. The first premise is God is omnipresent, okay? And like, you know, like, I define God as the universe. I was raised religiously, born Jewish, raised Christian, but like, I just believe in a naturalistic God. If, if God is omnipresent, then God is everything, everywhere. Right. Right? Okay, that's the first one. The second one is like that God is omnipotent, okay? In other words, like that all power is God, like... God is the only power. And when you say God, you mean the universe. Exactly. And what? The cosmos of energy? Everything. That's, that's, that's the thing. When you say God, you're not picturing like a guy up there that you pray to. Right. In other it's words, the energy of the universe moving around. Yes. So God is in this table. God is right. in us. God okay. is in the lights. Yes. God is everywhere. So when he says God, he means the entirety of the universe. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's the camera goes. No, absolutely. And the forces of nature, everything. Okay. So omnipresent is everywhere. Omni omnipotent is is all powerful. And what's omni omniscient is all knowing. Right. So like so God is all knowing. And think about it. If God So if God is all knowing, he knows your choices before you're gonna make them. Yes. Not this rabbi he sa who says he knows your choices. You make the choice, and then he gets the knowledge. I know. What comes first, the chicken or the egg? Here. That doesn't make sense. God, God was first. Got, yes. He created everything. Exactly. And mankind was not here. 14 billion years ago. Exactly. We just came here like a couple, like 30,000, whatever it is, like yesterday compared to that. Right. And some rabbis will say, well, God is recreating the universe every, every millisecond. Moment. But that's but, like. Well, if he's recreating the, the universe every moment, then it's his choice. And the one, yeah, and the other right? thing he's is. He's creating like, my choice every moment. Right. But, but like, you know, that's somebody that they, that may be like in the, in the, in Kabbalah, in the Talmud or something. It's not in the Bible. In the Bible, it clearly says God created the heaven and earth in seven days. It didn't say that he's continually creating everything. So, like, you know, that's like an interpretation. But anyway, all right. So, like, so God is synonymous with the universe. God is, and again, if he's all powerful, if, if God is the only power in the universe, that should tell you why we don't have free will. Mm -hmm. If God is the only power, and you know, some people say, well, he's all powerful, he can do whatever he wants, so he can give us free will. No, he can't. Another way of understanding this, can God create a rock, a boulder so big that even he can't lift it? So like, no, there's limits to God's power. He can't do everything he wants, he wants but he is the only power in the universe because he created it. That's the thing. All right. So, so what about when someone says, God gave me free will? Right. Well, I mean, like, the reason they're saying that is because they... The reason why they're saying that has a cause. Exactly. You could say, give me a decision that's freely willed. 
let the person answer. Right. Ask them that that per, if that decision had a cause. Right. You win. That's it. Absolutely. So, so whoever's you, telling you that God gave them free will, there's a cause to that. They're proving just by saying that that they don't have a free will. Because if you ask them, why are you saying that? Oh, I was taught that. They didn't come out of the, you know, when they were a one millisecond-year-old baby, they weren't talking in baby language that God gave me free will. They didn't know that. So exactly. someone had to tell them. Probably a parent who they idolize or a minister, rabbi, priest, whatever. So well, yeah. they were conditioned to say that. Right. So that comment alone proves there's no free will. Absolutely. If and you, you can, you get you can, that. You can yeah, absolutely, because you can use this for with any explanation. Anytime somebody says, like, you know, I believe I have free will, all you have to do is like, all right, well, let's put it to the test. Give me something. Give me a choice you believe is freely willed. If it has a cause, it's not Let them answer. Willed. Let them answer. Right. And then? Then you say, well, listen, you know, what does, does it have a cause? If it has a cause, then it can't be freely willed because everything has a cause. And, you know, all right. All right, Good. so here, we talked about now that. this is very cool. All right, so what happens when we pray to God? You skip part two. No, that's all right, because like, it's basically like it's a definition of like, in other words, God is omnipresent. So, everywhere, everything. Right, so if God is everywhere and everything, that God is the universe. Now, this is kind of like to secularize it. And okay. omnipotent is laws of nature. Right, so if God is the only power in the universe, that means God is the law of gravity. God is electromagnetism. God is the weak nuclear force, the strong nuclear force. Do you think force. the hedonic imperative is a law of nature? That well, we always seek pleasure and go away from pain? In a certain sense, because, yeah, because our genetic makeup, our drives, they're the laws that govern. We can't escape that, yeah. I mean, they're not So that's like, why people believe in free will. It's a law of nature to, to feel good on you. It makes them feel better. I know, I know. And talk about the last one, self-awareness or self-conscious. Right, so in other words, if you're like everything and you're governing everything, you're the laws of nature... In order to be governing everything, you have to be aware of everything. You have to know everything. So it's not like the God, God may not know, let's say, what's going to happen in a million years. He may, he may, I'm not sure. But the idea is that, like, to be, to govern everything, to be the ruler of the universe, you have to be aware of everything in the universe. That's where omniscience comes in. Okay. So, okay? So that, that's how we can equate God with the universe, you know, in terms of om, om, omnipresence, omnipotence, omniscience. Okay, now this is cool. This is, this is like very, very cool. Now what happens when we pray to God? So think about it. You know, dear God, um, let this show go really well, okay? What's happening? God is putting these words into my mouth. Okay, so God is putting me, these words into my mouth, addressing God. <laughs> so, so it's God talking. So God, so God likes to talk to himself. Yes, yes. And this, and this is, the funny thing about this, is, this isn't just limited to, to, to praying to God. This is actually, when we're talking, okay, it's like as if God is up there. And you remember when we were little kids, you played with soldiers and stuff, and you had them talk to each other? So that's what God does with us. He just like it's the first time I've heard that. Yeah. It's surreal. That's what, that's the amazing thing about this show. But we're limiting it, limiting it to prayer, basically. All right. So like, so because yeah, that's the thing. So like, so think about it. Um, Keep talking. Our some rabbis. I just want to make a point. When a rabbi, priest, or minister goes on and on about free will, aren't they kind of biased from the beginning? I mean, it's their job. It's their career. It's their identity. We're, we have nothing, you know, we're just regular people. I have a regular job, and so do, you know, you, whatever. But we, we didn't have anything at stake. I mean, we just discovered this by being neutral. But any time a rabbi gets up there, he's got to believe in free will. Otherwise, he'll lose his position, social status, and everything else. Well, he will be without a job. They'll throw him out of the synagogue. So he has to keep going on and on. I mean, it's a biased sample That's size. That's an excellent point. Excellent point. We we can say whatever we want because we don't have a congregation. That, I don't have anything. Yeah. That's the thing. But you're right. If you're there's there's a there's a um a belief that says you know it you can't get somebody to believe. And something. then they wear special clothing and they wear a yarmulke and they have a long white beard and they they're very good orators so they they play the role of convincing you. Yeah. But every time I hear them talk about free will, they say quote it's complex. It could have a separate lecture on its own for four hours. It's very complicated, multi-layered. It's very unneat, multi-dimensional. I mean, they never make any sense because every time it gets to free will, they keep saying how complex it is and how complex it's not. I know. They're just trying to throw you off. That's a very good point. It, yeah. That's a very good point. They could talk it's about... It's a mystery. 
Yeah. And a paradox. Right. But but again, all you have to do is say, well, like, does what you're thinking, saying, doing, feeling have a cause? Yes, it has a cause because everything has to have a cause. That's why free will is impossible. And there, there's no religious argument can, they can override that. Absolutely none. That's how solid the they case is. They just say, is. God gave me free will. That's the end of it. Right. And, you know, I mean, because Where, like, Where's the proof of that? Where, why is that a premise? And Where you, does it say that? That's another thing. It's not even in the Bible. Even if it was, why God created people to, to write better books than the Bible. Let's, My we, book, the Newer Testament. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> I love plugging it. Yeah. And anyway, God didn't write the Bible. Humans wrote the Bible as a conduit of God. So we, I did the same thing with my book. Exactly. Just because it's 2012 years later, it should make it better. Exactly. Exactly. We have. And the why benefit. did all of God's miracles stop back then? Why didn't He just continue making? Why has He been on a, 20, a 2012 year uh, break? I know. And you want to know Jesus. something? And why, if God wanted us to believe in Jesus so much, why didn't He create Jesus? Why there were video cameras on Earth? You ever you want, think of that? Yeah. Could, and actually, that would be better think about uh, this. salesmanship. Think about this. The miracles back then, nobody, quote, could, who knows? nobody could explain them, right? But you want to know something? Part of the Red Sea. These whatever. lights are a miracle. Th these cameras are a miracle. Modern life, but it's just like... No, we, but they know the causes. That's the thing. That's Parting the, the Red Sea or whatever, it's not, you know... I know, but like, think about it like... I mean, Noah's like, Ark taking every two of every... Yeah, I mean, anyway, no, no, I... <laughs> those miracles are more miracles... I, I, no, I hear you. Anyway, PhDs uh, disagree. I'm sure philosophers disagree. I'm sure religious people. You said religious people do disagree. Oh, yeah. You There's got that Calvinists. Yeah. Calvinists are a religious sect, a religious Christian dom um, denomination. They don't believe in free will. They don't believe in free so will. So there's disagreement. All right. Exactly. Let's go on. Number all right. four. So, like, all right. We're, so, like. Number four. Okay. Now, all right. Four. All right. So, like, God knew a million years ago what's happening today because that's what omniscience is all 14 about 14 billion years ago exactly exactly at the big bang god knew exactly what i'd be saying right now what what you'd be thinking right now what everything would be happening so it's not that he set laws in motion that you know deterministic barrel through time and they're going to intersect right so he may you know he just set laws in motion that make everything predetermined exactly exactly because right. it's I like a train going a certain miles an hour and another train going and they, and they can't be altered from their course. So he's just set all the laws of motion and nature in motion, causing everything to be the way it is. And that brings us to our next point, which is like another surreal thing. We understand how we human beings don't have free will, but you want to know something else? In the present, at this present time, God doesn't have a free will either. Think I'm, about I'm it. I'm glad you finally got that. <laughs> just argue with me about that. <laughs> If God had a free will, he would just cause things to leap over each other without any reason. And, and a the comet thing is, would be going towards an asteroid, and he would say, oh. <laughs> right. You think he does that? And in no, human life, he, he would do that. That's he would thing. intervene, and, you know, then there wouldn't be any cause. Right. And that would be, you know. And, other, and the other thing is, for example, like, let's that say. That would be random, then. Let's it would say, be uncaused. If we define God as all-knowing. If God is all-knowing, he's got to be all-knowing. He can't, like, not know anything. And if he knows everything, he's got to act on that knowledge. But the other thing is, like, for example, if God knew a million years ago what's going to be happening at this present moment, he also knew what he would be doing at this present moment. Right. That's cool. That is like, that is like, oh, that's a mind blower. So, like, we human beings don't have free will in the present. God doesn't have a human uh, a free will in the present. Now, he did. And here, all right, we can we can get um, let's 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 go back. All right, we can say that like when you say God's will is completely unfree, it's because God is a universe. The universe has laws of motion, energy, nature, and must adhere to. No one's ever said like a, a star will suddenly jump over, and you know, there's nothing that will just jump out of causality. Right. That would be God just saying, "Oh, I don't want that comet to hit." The, they're about to. Collide, oh, I'll just make it disappear and have it pop up. There would be a cause for that. Right. And if God, we knew the cause would be a law of nature, gravity, Higgs boson, whatever. Particle physics, sub subatomic particle physics and Exactly. So they're they're there. So God can't break his laws. God knew Adams. people we don't fly, we don't levitate, maybe. Oh, I we wanna do, mention but... one thing about this rabbi I read. Okay. He was saying that Sam Harris, back to his book, starts with a murder, right? Right. And he says that if I were that guy, Adam for Adam, with the same genetics and conditioning and the same soul, I would be that guy, right? Yeah. But the rabbi says he wouldn't be that guy at the beginning of his crazy sermon. 
He says, I would have free will. My, I have the soul of God. But if uh, you had his soul, you would be him. And he would be, you know, atom for atom, neuron for neuron, quark for quark. If I were the, that, if a murderer murdered someone and I had everything in that same, in the same universe, right? Adam for Adam and the same soul that he had, I would be him and, and would have done the same. Absolutely. So I don't get what he says in that. Yeah. I know it's a religious ba thing, but right. Basically, he's, he's saying, saying we all have same the same soul that is open to free will. Right. Well, you what know, if I had his soul, I would have killed somebody. I watched that same speech. It's an excellent speech. That's it, how he opens it. Rabbi New Moshe you know, New in Montreal. If you go on on YouTube, yeah, Rabbi New. Um, he Moshe talks about M O S H E New. Believe it or not, N E W. But he has a very old way of thinking and an old paradigm. Okay. Mr. New and he is very old. Right. So he talks about like that, you Looks know. Looks like Santa Claus, a long white beard. Basically our soul. But he gets this part. One part he gets. And then he like, confuses Because he'll go, he'll say, you know, because of this we don't have free will. Then because of this we have free will. We can, so he goes back and forth. But one thing he says is, he says that like, well, it's really our soul. Our human soul is making decision. But what he gets right is it's not really our soul. It's God's soul. So it's like he whenever, says there's a part of our soul which is God and that free will comes in moral decisions. Right. Every moral decision has a causal history to it. I don't care what he says. I know. All right, let's go to number 4A. I know, sorry. All right. Well, uh, no, I just want to oh, Here's the thing. They're like, all right, God, we human beings and God don't have a free will in the present, right? But, but you have to think like when God was creating the universe, creation, whatever the world and us you would think that at a certain point he had a free will you would think in other words like you know like i like to, uh, you know they say another definition of god besides omnipresent omnip omnipotent omnipot omniscient is that is that god is like omnibenevolent that he's all good i don't I, believe that what i know and, i think god is neutral all right, but here's, Good and bad. Here's, and, and, and this is, a, we, we might as well talk about this, because like, I, all right, if there's evil in the world, right, or pain. Pain uh, and pleasure, right. Evil, let's, because like, all right, John Locke, there's a um, British philosopher, John Locke, who defines goodness as what creates happiness, right, or pleasure. So if goodness creates happiness and pleasure, then evil is what creates pain and unhappiness, right? But the guy doing evil might enjoy it. Right. No, but what I'm saying is like, since nothing is up to us human beings, then that would kind of like lead to the conclusion that God is responsible for the evil. And here's the thing. I mean, like, you could say that God is both good and evil because Isaiah says that. Without free will, it's hard to say good and evil. It's pain and pleasure, yes, not good or bad. What I'd like to believe, I'd like to believe because I, I don't like to, this understanding that we don't have free will. When you will, say it's evil, when I call somebody evil, they're evil to me and they were fated to be evil to me. Right, so it's so not there, really there's a good and evil, but it's predetermined and faded. One one person might think someone's evil, another person might think they're not evil. How do you explain that? Well, yeah, because that's relative morals and stuff. But like you know, let's say something we all agree in, whatever, whatever. But then, right, the the idea is if it's not our fault, then you would think it would have to be God's fault, right? But here, and I got God's the moral authority. He's the guy that says what's good and evil. Well, think about it. If it's not our fault and God created us, well, if we don't have free will and we do evil, he can't hold us. He can't judge us exactly so negatively. it's not our fault so that then that the, the logic one logical conclusion would be that since it's not our fault it has to be god's fault but i don't like that either because like again when i learned that we didn't have a free will it was great because that meant i don't have to blame other people i don't have to blame me i don't you know so like so here's the thing so i want to see god as good okay so like remember when we defined god as omnip omnipotent okay i would prefer to believe that god is all good. But your preference is a causal state. You can choose your preferences, but you can't choose what you prefer. I know. You can choose your desires, but you can't choose what you desire. In other words, like so when I'm... So you're predetermined to, to prefer that. Yes, in other words... For some so, nutty, crazy reason. Well, it's because God. God is making me say this. Right. I'm not saying this. But I have a different causal history. God I think is the making universe you is say neutral. that. Right. God is making you say... As long as you both we both realize that we have no choice but to state what we're stating. I know. And again, it's God saying So tell me all. how you got the causal history of choosing to prefer that God is good. All right, well, that's the thing, because, like... How did that come about? Oh, it's simply because I don't want to be angry with God. If I'm not angry with God, I'm closer with, to God, and that feels better. So, so that's the thing. So, like, so God doesn't know everything. But don't you want to be, instead of lying to yourself, don't you want to be more of a realist, that there's I, good and bad, there's 
starving kids in the world. No, no, I understand. There's plenty that of terrible there things. There is terrible. So but, why do you say God is good? All right, I'll, because I'll tell you why. Because like when I do something bad, right? I, I want to do good, right? But I make mistakes, all right? And so like I might be doing something I think is good, but it's actually bad. So I'm thinking maybe that's the same thing with God. God may be like, you know, everywhere and, and everything, but he may not be all-knowing and all-powerful because like if he's not know, all-knowing and all-powerful, evil and pain, especially pain, because if there's no pain, there's no evil, that was a mistake. So God is completely good, but he made a mistake in creating pain. Oh, yeah. He made me say God that. knows everything. God knows God knows everything, but like it's like it's like you could say that God the is all The point of the show is to figure out if human beings have free will. So you're getting everybody confused. <laughs> does it really matter if God made a mistake or not? How does that push the premise forward that humans don't have a oh, no, free no, will? No, it doesn't. Oh, it do okay. It's just that I, I want to feel good about this. Again, I feel great. I right, here's a perfect example, folks, of the hedonic imperative live or whatever he's trying so hard to feel good about himself he'll say anything to even tell me that god made a mistake to make himself feel better right, let's go ahead here all right because it's not about me again i want to feel that god is good so i can feel good about him just all so right. that everyone knows for the record god's will is not free i don't know what he's talking about all right <laughs> we'll, we'll go into this because we're gonna get doesn't into matter this again. god knew what we would make god knew what he would make us pray for and why his answer and what his answer would be number Four B with five minutes left. Let's right. try to get through this. Well, that's the thing is like it's like we're little soldiers. When we were kids, we're playing with soldiers. So that's what God is doing with with us. It's like God's making him pray to. And here's the thing. So there are God, no mistakes. Oh man, God makes us pray to him sometimes, and God says no. What's that about, man? He's like, you know, if he's cuz again, he's making us pray. He's making us say the words, say what we're praying for, and if we don't thank him, that's cuz he doesn't make us thank us and then he punishes us. I mean, can you appreciate the sublime surrealness of our prayers to God? Yeah. Well, that's what the show is about. So what you're saying is when we pray to God, it's God praying to himself. Yes. So God likes to talk to himself. Yes. What's surreal about all this is that how everything is predetermined. I think that's wild. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're just along for the ride. A magic yeah. carpet ride, as they say. A movie. Absolutely. An epic movie. An epic... It's an epic movie that you're the star of and the observer of at the same time. And again, we, you know, again, we've, we've all seen movies that have been great, even though if we've seen them before and stuff, that means like we don't have to like not enjoy life just because everything is a movie. That's a very we can good enjoy point. it just, yeah. You enjoy them. I saw Titanic a couple times and I just liked seeing because I thought it was so well done. Okay. Titanic, did you ever see that movie? Oh, I got to see it. I, gotta I, see I saw it, it and then it. it came out with the uh, 100 year anniversary. 3D and I saw it again and I really enjoyed it. I knew exactly what was going to happen, but Absolutely. it's so well done. And uh, a couple movies I feel that way about. Uh, incidentally, I've seen The Truman Show about three times over the last three weeks or so because if you see The Truman Show, you'll understand how we don't have free will because that was what, you know, Truman, he was in that same situation. I want to end with this this last kind well, of Let's point. go to number six real quick. Well, all right, because here's the thing. Many people don't want to accept that we don't have a free will because then they'll see, well, we're all puppets, we're all automatons, we're robots, we're just like, you know, you don't have to, we don't have to see ourselves that way. We can see ourselves as manifesting God's will. God is everywhere, so we are part of we are part of God. Exactly. So in other words, this hand is a part of me. This hand doesn't decide to pick this up, but it's manifesting my will. So in that same way, we everybody is manifesting. We're all part of God, manifesting part of God's will. That's what people need to hear. What do so you there's think? no room for free will. Absolutely. I mean, come on. What about when someone says, "I have a little free will"? No, that's absurd. How could you have a little free yeah. will? Because that little bit of you is 100% independent of the genetics and conditioning. And what is it making its decision based on? Exactly. Exactly. What about people tell me, God knows my free will choices? No, God knows our choices because God's making us do the choices. That's what this whole show is about. It's like what I said the other night. If I go to a fork in the road and I ask George, I need to make a left or a right, and he tells me go left and right, that's like taking it both ways, that's what I crazy. call bi spiritual. Yeah, it's crazy. It's uh, it's insane. Double talk. People say that okay, it's one or the other. It's like calling someone about your flight is it canceled or delayed, as you probably heard on the show before. And the customer service says your sh your flight is delayed and on time. Yeah. Which is it? So, is you have free will or you don't? 
That's a very you have good a little point. free will. No, no, no. God knows your free will choices. Oh, can I do that example where I say I'm God? Sure. Pretend I'm God. I got this from that guy Tarl from the internet. So, all right, I'm God. Pick pick the pen or the paper. <laughs> the paper. The paper. Yes. Now, if I'm God, I knew what you were gonna do, right? Absolutely. So that made it physically impossible for you to pick the pen. Absolutely. So just because you don't know, but I know, also proves that free will is impossible. It's very simple. Absolutely. Very simple. But Rabbi New says that God's, that the past retroactively is all God's will, but going forward it's your will. That's absurd, because like if the past is all God's will, then like how does the... You have to learn from it, use your free the, will. Yeah, how does the future become our free will, and then when it gets to be the past, it's not our free will anymore? That's right, absurd. Right, because all our futures will be our past. Right, right. So totally incoherent. Incoherent. And the, now let me tell you, this we rabbi... You can't argue he, with people who are incoherent. I no, mean, just, but, just, it's but like he, talking to a, he nut, gives, a crazy he person. He gives the best talk on free will that I've seen any cleric talk. Because, you know, again, he... He's, he's using Sam Harris, actually. He's, he's logical. He, he understands why we don't have free will. So go he, to but, YouTube, you know, Moshe New, N-E-W, from the Montreal Torah Kabbalah Center. Some Chabad Center, yeah. M- M- Moshe New put free will. Okay, so again, if you don't want to see yourself as a puppet or robot or automaton, yeah, that's very negative. People don't like that. Understand that you're a part of God and understand that you're manifesting God's will. And remember, these rabbis and priests and all these guys—the reason why they can't explain fully what free will means is because when they go into it, they become totally. When they start defending free will, they become totally incoherent and illogical. And then they go into it's multi-layered, it's multi-dimensional, it's unneed, it's complex, it's a paradox. That's all these guys have is their defense, that it's too complicated, you wouldn't understand. Right. That's how they get out of it. They don't want to discuss it. Exactly, because, I mean... I had that the other night. I had a party in my apartment. I was talking about this woman at the uh, election party, and I said things are either uncaused or caused. And she said, no, there's a third alternative. And I asked her what it was. It's too complicated. You wouldn't understand. It's a paradox. It's multi-layered. I mean... Why don't they explain it? Absolutely. I no. can't understand it. I'm in Mensa. Why can't I understand Why don't they just explain it to no, me? No, because they, they, have, they don't know how, because it's they, it doesn't exist. That's why. If I, How can I explain? Okay, goodbye. <laughs>